changing the format this morning and going to be t speaking from here. Now, you're perfectly welcome to sit exactly where you're sitting, but if you want to come closer, please feel free. <laughs> Just at the microphone on this side is better. Hmm? Yes. That's right. Hmm. Just about now, eh? Yes. Right. Well, good morning and uh, welcome to the annual public meeting of the Creative Living Centre. My name's Jeff Shupp and I'm honoured to be the chair of the Creative Living Centre board and uh, um, I'm also proud and honoured to call, as we proceed, on uh, board members to report on the, uh, the aspects of the Creative Living Centre that, uh, that, that interest us today. Thank you. First of all, a, an acknowledgement of traditional custodians. For thousands of years, Indigenous people have walked on this land, on their own country. Their relationship with the land is at the centre of their lives. We acknowledge the Wadjuk people and their elders past, present and emerging. We acknowledge their stewardship of this land, Noongar land, throughout the ages. Let's dedicate our, our meeting in prayer. Creator God, we give thanks that we can gather in your name and celebrate the work undertaken by your church through the Creative Living Centre. We celebrate the partnership we have with the people of Moanjum, Aboriginal community in the Kimberley and the Indigenous people of Papua. We pray for continued blessings on the work and may we discern your hand and guidance as we go forward following the path to find in the work and ministry of Jesus. Amen. The first report uh, is uh, <coughs> uh, the, uh, the, the CLC board report, and, uh, and I'll keep this report fairly brief. The work of the Creative Living Centre is best displayed in the work of BOAB Network and Black Pearl Network, and reports of that work, as I mentioned, will follow my few words. The Creative Living Centre Board has met quarterly through 2022 and reported, as required by our constitution, to the All Saints Floriat Uniting Church Council. The board is constituent, sorry, is constituent to, what sort of a word is that? The, the board is required to have 12 members with power to co-opt. Uh, there were no co-opted members during 2022. Through 2022, we regretfully accepted resignations from a number of members. Um, that's not what it says. There we go. Um, we accepted resignations uh, from Karen Sloan, Hayley Smith and John Tyrrell. And uh, we also acknowledge that uh, their contribution uh, through the programs will continue. Um, Hayley... Uh, has resigned because she has set up a, uh, a, a new practice and decided that she needed to uh, devote her time to that, which is understandable. We welcomed new members to the board, Gail Creswell, Mark Fielding and Donna Wilson. They've joined the board and make a, contrib a con significant contribute contribution to the work. Um, Gail is a teacher uh, based in Derby. Uh, early learning is her area. Um, and she's had a long association with BOAB Network and we were really pleased when Gail accepted nomination to the board. She functions um, as the Derby Prison Chaplain and uh, had been a very uh, important element in the Derby Uniting, or the Moenjum uh, Church basically, the Uniting Church. Um, and uh, with her teaching programs in Moenjum um, and her contact within the community, um, she's forged really strong links with the Moanjum residents, which gave us a really important set of ears and eyes in the community, um, and we were able to get really useful, and we are able to get really useful um, information through Gail. We also elected the Reverend Robert Hoskin to the board. Robert's a retired Uniting Church minister living in Melbourne. 
Um, Robert has had a long association with the Moenjum community and uh, has authored a history of the involvement of the BOAB network in a self-published book titled uh, A Kimberley Collaboration. Many of you probably have got a copy of that. Really interesting, informative book. Um, and uh, now Robert took up the 12th seat on, on, the, uh, on the board. Um, and church council approval was sought to his taking up that seat because our constitution requires that one of our members um, be under 30 years of age. And Robert sure isn't. And um, um, the, the council, in its wisdom, approved Robert's appointment to the board for a 12-month period. Um, and he basically took on the seat left by Haley, who did qualify, I think. Yeah, she would have qualified as an under 30. Um, now, um, the addition of uh, Gail and Robert to the board um, was greatly facilitated by the availability of Zoom video technology because Gail, living in Derby, and Robert in Melbourne um, were able to participate in the meetings via, via Zoom. Um, I did want to mention too the work of Karen Sloan, which has been significant as a board member over many, many years. Um, you know Karen and uh, you know her enthusiasm and drive. And the other resignation from John Tyrrell um, was accepted with regret as well. John, this is John here if you don't know John. Wave your hand, John. John is a powerhouse for BOAB Network and um, as a uh, retired builder and uh, um, a recent, you're still working, doing the inspections? No, as a retired building uh, advisor, his input has been invaluable, um, particularly on projects that Mari will mention. And also his uh, um, interest in the, in the vehicle fleet um, has been very important and he's a meticulous record keeper and his affection and love for the people of Moenjum shine through um, in what he does. And so thanks, John, for your uh, time on the board and for your continuing work. Thank you. Got to find my place again. Oh, here we go. Now, um, missing today, and uh, we'll make a, a bit more of this later, is Deborah Marshall, who Deborah makes a significant contribution um, to the board and uh, in her absence we, we sincerely thank her um, for the uh, work and the expertise that she contributes. Um, our our multifaceted program doesn't make the accounting task particularly easy um, and Deborah sticks with it and keeps us um, on the straight and narrow um, financially which is really good. And I'd also like to acknowledge the work of our administrative officer, um, Ash Briscoe. Wave your hand around a bit. Ash, you've probably seen Ash around the building from time to time. Ash works usually Tuesdays and Fridays and is making a, a, a significant contribution um, to the work of uh, Creative Living Centre. And we give you thanks, Ash. Thank you so much for your time and, uh, um, and, and efforts there. And uh, I'm guilty of ringing her when I know that she's not supposed to be at work, but I do need some, some feedback from her. So uh, thank you. Um, Ash's position, just to let you know, is funded by a specific grant from a private trust. Um, and uh, that is great because you know, the, the funds that are donated towards, towards the work go to the work and, and are not sidelined to the important. Um, work of the administrator but, but not contributing directly on the, in the field, if you like. So if you see Ash around the building, say good day to her and uh, make her feel welcome. Whilst this report today reflects on activities during 2022, it would be remiss of me to let the moment pass without acknowledging the dedication and interest in the work of CLC by the Reverend Ian Tover. Tozer. Wave your hand, Ian, we need to know who you are. Thank you. <laughs> Ian holds a seat on the board um, as part of Constitution, um, requesting that the Minister at Floriot um, be part of that board. And Ian's contribution 
um, is, is also significant. Ian has an, a very sharp um, mind for uh, um, organisation and uh, governance matters. And uh, Ian, thank you so much for your contribution over the years. We will miss that. But um, um, yes, uh, Ian, you probably don't realise how much work was done behind the scenes, uh, quietly and without any fanfare, which has resulted in your uh, your, your future uh, employment. So just we'd like you just to remember that in that seat, and when you see things come through with uh, with uh, CLC letterhead, you'll. Uh, You'll, you'll read it particularly carefully. <laughs> oh, thank you, Ian. They're always the <laughs> thank you, Ian. So that's basically a story of CLC board through 2022. Uh, there will be time for questions uh, at the uh, conclusion of our short meeting. Um, but it's now uh, my pleasure to call on Mari Young, and who's going to uh, um, bring us a report on the work of the BOAB network. Deborah Marshall was going to be here this morning as our, our treasurer to uh, give the financial report. But unfortunately, in the past 24 hours, her mother has become ill in, in England and Deborah is jumping on a plane today to go over to see her mum in hospital. So we um, are thinking of them and, and uh, wish them well. And, uh, and, and I've got a copy of the financial reports here, and I think you have a copy as well. If you want, would like a copy after and you don't have one, then uh, we can get you one. Um, basically, it's a very simple report, this one, it's, uh, and it's just to show you the bottom line to show that we are solvent, which is a great thing to be able to say. Um, we have three separate accounts uh, three separate lines of accounts. One is for the Creative Living Centre itself. When people donate money or we get grants of money that are not specifically for the Kimberley or for uh, Papua, they go into the Creative Living Centre account and then it's up to the board to decide whether or not, where that money should be spent. So that money is all available for both Papua and the Kimberley. And then, of course, we have separate uh, lines there for the BOAB network and another line for the Black Pearl network. Um, the BOAB network appears to have a lot of money, but in fact, some of that is in assets in the motor vehicles, because we have two motor vehicles, although as of next week, we will only have one because our bus is being sold. Um, but um, that accounts for our assets, which is about half of our bottom line. Um, we had a couple of uh, school holiday programs that didn't eventuate in the last 12 months because of COVID um, and also because of the, the cyclone that went through that cut the road between Broome and Derby. So we basically couldn't get there. And uh, so that in a way is a saving, it's a sad saving, but it is a saving to our, our financial report. And um, we have, uh, I'll, you'll hear the BOAB network report later to hear what we're carrying on to, to do. Um, the Papuan uh, finances appear to be quite high. They draw on the money on a very, regular and consistent basis because salary money is sent to all 14 teachers and and the administrative staff every month. And so um, the money is there, but it's, uh, it's sent off monthly to pay salaries up north. Um, and that, so there's a, a constant uh, draw on that money. We're very fortunate in the Black Pearl Network that we have a couple of businesses that sponsor us directly from their business. And uh, that has enabled us to employ more teachers. Um, there's a need for more teachers, and but we don't take on new teachers or start new schools until we know that we have the funding in place. So that's the way we, we manage our finances. 
Are there any questions? I'll see if I can answer them. No, not at this stage. Okay, but anyway, if you have any questions at any time, we're very happy to talk with you about that. Um, oh, it's already been changed for me, that's lovely. I'm going to talk now about the BOAB network because that's the one that I'm most involved in. In the past year, there have been many ups and downs uh, in the uh, BOAB network, but it's also had the opportunity, it's given us the opportunity to draw more closely in our relationship with the Moanjum community itself. Sadly, there have been a few deaths of our good friends in the community, and they all have a deep and profound impact on the people and on us as members of the BOAB network who have known them as friends for 15 years. There's been media coverage of two of the leading elders who died within a week of each other, and they left a void in the community. Donnie Woolagudja and Janet Ubaguma, who were highly regarded keepers of culture, language, art, and family up there, um, are sadly missed. Donnie was born on the Presbyterian mission at Kanmanya, and Janet was born in Broome during a Japanese air raid <laughs> She always tells that story. But she spent her, all her primary school years on the Kanmanya mission. They were moved by the government off their own land and they have, live in Moanjum near Derby, or they lived in Moanjum near Derby, and they are greatly loved and will be sorely missed. We ran two successful holiday programs last year with lovely bunch of uh, volunteers, despite the COVID closures and the cyclone damage. I hope you're noting that picture there of a little hill trolley, which Jeff and uh, Jeff made along with the young people. They made several hill trolleys and they pushed each other around and then they had races and they, they were just absolutely adored. So Jeff Shupp, is a, a master of that sort of thing. And I had to put that photo up so you could see it. There was a wave of social upheaval in Derby, including the stealing of two of the BOAB network vehicles and Gail's car. The bus was not so badly damaged, but a Toyota Land Cruiser was driven a long way and left very badly damaged, and it was written off by the insurance but our friends at the Cornerstone Action Group of Christian Builders have connections in the vehicle industry and they persuaded us to buy the wreck and, and they are currently doing it up for our future use. The BOAB Network team is aware that after actively running school holiday programs and back to country trips and community development programs that they're ageing and they need to pass the baton. We need more middle-aged group of volunteers, early retirees like we were when we first took up the work. However, it is heartening to see that we have a group of very keen young ambassadors who are taking up the, case of the cause of the Creative Living Centre at a university and school level. And they have such great ideas and they're putting them into action. So it's heartening. The next things for this year are the Perth trip uh, in the April school holidays, coming up very soon, for the high school aged young people, and then the school holiday program in Moanjum in July. That photo there is a photo of John Tyrrell in the back row. There's a school teacher on the back left Trevor Gillen, many of you will know, is the leader of the Cornerstone Action Group of Christian Builders and some of the other workers who went up there to work on the buildings. The wider family of our Moanjum clans have asked the BOAB network to help them develop their building, community buildings. Now, Coop and Gary is up the Gibb River Road near Mount Barnett and it has a cultural hub building that was desperately in need of repairs. 
Boab Network has assisted with the costings and getting funding from Lottery West, overseeing the building project, doing much of the building project, and engaging with the Cornerstone Action Group, and uh, hand, uh, they're handing over a beautifully restored hub. Now that's the building on the left, big wide verandas, and uh, the inside of the building was, well, was unusable. But you can see there's a new kitchen being built, the, the walls and the rooms are now looking beautiful, and uh, it's a great, great pleasure to see. It was hours and weeks of hard work by John Tyrrell, including several trips up there and dodging COVID and finding local tradespeople to assist from Broome and Derby. Nikki Sanderlands, who's the principal of the school, wrote saying, thank you so much, John. We're very grateful to everyone who has worked so tirelessly to get this up and off the ground. Pandanus Park is a community off the Broome Highway near the Willare Bridge. Uh, and it, it's the next one to be tackled. There's no government department to take on these jobs, which are too big for the community themselves to tackle. Maybe the voice to parliament will make such projects a priority to assist local communities to function and to give pride in their town instead of a little bunch of Perth volunteers taking it on. All southern country towns have good community buildings, children's playgrounds, sports facilities, which are absent from Aboriginal communities. No wonder the kids feel they have nothing to do and no one cares. But we look forward to our continuing strong relationship with Moanjum. And these are our hope for the future. Beautiful young people of Moanjum. Thank you. I'll call on Leanne now because she's going to tell us about the Black Pearl Network work up in Papua. Thanks, Leanne. Yeah. Um, there's so much to tell you about Papua and I really just have 10 minutes. So there's a lot of pictures here because I'm remembering that each one's worth a thousand words and I have got a lot of words. So you're going to have to just read the words from the pictures. How about if I use the microphone more effectively? Okay, so I wanted to start off by reminding you about the vision of the Black Pearl Network. Recent uh, occurrences have brought it home to us that not everybody knows what our real aims and objectives are. So I thought if I just post this up here, you can be reminded that the Black Pearl Network's committed to a mutually transforming partnership, supporting Papuan people to achieve their development aspirations. Uh, our values are local wisdom and culture, integrity, environmental sustainability, human rights, our shared Christian tradition, respectful engagement with the local community, and the dignity of all humanity. So that underpins the aims and objectives of the organisation. And here are our basic aims are to support and promote community development, responsible use of resources, cultural exchange and partnership. And in order to do that, we are going to use education, promote health, build capacity in the local communities and help to, org to promote organisation and infrastructure development in the communities where we're working. Now, we do that through several different programs. Uh, the first one, and the one that you're probably very familiar with, is the APSET program. And now I'm sure you've already met Jerry and Welly, but Jerry and Welly have joined us about two weeks ago for this APSET program. It's quite different from any other in that we now have two scholarships uh, for the students to go to Milner College. It's a very generous gift from Milner College each each week of tuition is worth $305 per student. They've gifted us 24 weeks of, tu of tuition. So that is a fantastic gift and it saves us setting up an amateur school here. This is a really wonderful outcome for the APSEP course. Mm. However, we actually gain lots of things from the APSEP course. And this is one gift. So Jerry has, has offered today to bring us a gift of song.
He's not an experienced performer. This is the first time he's done this in church, although it's a very common thing to happen in Papua, that people gift their music to the church. So I'm inviting Jerry to go ahead. so much Jerry we really appreciate your gift and and what a huge gift it is from somebody who's never done that before so it's wonderful was one of those languages your local Nabiri language Biek language ah that's where Welly's from so we're getting a touch of all the cultures now yeah. whoops just sit back there a bit gee that was a lot of pictures, wasn't it? Now, this is another little bit of the APSEP story. And Welly is, is panicking here because this is Welly's dad. 
And we met Welly's family when we were in Byakutara, which is where she hails from. She was living in Jayapura, attending university, but her family welcomed us to their home and gifted us these beautiful ceramic bowls, which are an integral part of, of Papuan culture. And you can see there Welly's dad giving uh, a bowl to Jeff. Um, and it's a wonderful, a wonderful thing, and we really appreciated meeting her family. It's not very often we meet the families of the APSEP students before they arrive, but this time we were fortunate to meet both families. And, and so, of course, one of the mo major things about the APSEP course is the building of relationships and the long-lasting relationships and the long-lasting support. And this year, there has been a lot of long-lasting support in past APSEP students. Several of them have been very ill and have been supported by Australian family uh, financially and in prayer. And uh, even Ruth, who's been in hospital this last week with peritonitis following a ruptured appendix, has been supported by the people from this church. So it, it really does build relationships and they become our family. And there's uh, Lena, who many of you will remember from 2010. She's come back to visit us a couple of times. And some will remember Willie, who stayed with Ian and Amanda Brown. So we, we met up with many of our past EPSEP students while we were in Papua in November and December. And then we go on to the Clean Water Project. This is another major area of work in Papua. It's led by David Scott, who's now living in the United Kingdom. He hails from Star Street. However, he's now moved permanently to the UK. So thank goodness for COVID, it brought us gifts and one of them was the Zoom meeting app. So we can now meet, we have all our meetings internationally, they're attended by David in the UK, by Fred and others in Papua, and uh, more local people, Ross is often in Dunsborough, and Gail in, in uh, the Kimberley, so through Zoom we're allowed to, we're able to Im include everybody. The water program is now staffed by a salaried engineer. She's a, a young graduate engineer, and she's overseen by David in the UK, and he will be visiting in April to have a look at the projects that have been built over the last 12 months. Uh, water quality testing is employed for all projects so that we know that uh, the water that we are delivering is safe. Uh, the local people are trained at every installation, so eight or 10 or 12 of the young people assist with the building. They um, participate in a one to two day workshop to explain the principles of the system and how to put it into practice. And then we fervently hope that they return to their local communities and build more. So we don't own the technology, we don't keep the technology, our objective is to spread the technology. It's simple, it's durable, it's economical, and it changes lives. And uh, Ribka, our engineer, has actually written up a 12-month schedule for one new water project every month for the next 12 months, and we we'll wait and see how it progresses. So um, each project is a, is a big thing for the communities, and I want you to see how it works. noticed Herman there working on the clean water project. Herman used to be our clean water coordinator, however, he's another one of the APSEP students who has been extraordinarily successful and he's managed to get a scholarship to study overseas, so Ribka has taken over his position. And it's wonderful to see a woman leading an important project like that in Papua. If you look at that map very carefully, um, you'll see that it's all of the Papuan provinces of Indonesia, and each of those little flags represents a water project. And in fact, one of the flags is missing. There's now another project at a place called Mapi in the south. 
So those are where the projects have been built and Ribka is about to take off on a tour of all those centres to have a look at how they're, how they're operating, if they need remediation and to make sure the water testing is current. The next major project is the Black Pearl English course and it's through the Black Pearl English course that we get to meet Welly and Jerry because they are both students of the Black Pearl English course. Uh, you will notice that um, the facilities are not always what we would have in a classroom, but the students are very keen. Uh, the value of the course, uh, it employs 18 teachers. All of the teachers we have employed are Papuan. There is actually one amongst those teachers who's not Papuan, however, she worked for the English course before we took it over, so uh, that's how we have one non-Papuan teacher. Uh, there are low to no fees for all the classes and in fact we're just introducing low fees this semester for the first time and it's not been a smooth transition and I'm sure it will continue to not be very smooth, however we're working on it with a view to the course becoming self-sustainable in the future. Um, it's uh, based on active partnerships between the local regencies, the Classes and the Black Pearl Network. Uh, last year we had up almost a thousand students enrolled. I believe there's a few less now, probably about 700. However, none of the applications for scholarships have been assessed to date. And all those students who can't afford to pay the low fees are invited to apply for a scholarship. And if their need is real, they will get one. So that we're expecting probably hundreds of scholarships to be awarded so that nobody misses out on tuition because they come from a poor family. Um, all the teachers are completing the UN uh, Human Rights Commission, uh, HRC, <laughs> e-learning uh, program. It, it comprises 11 modules and it's really a first. We're not aware of any other teachers in Indonesia that are required to do this, but we want our teachers to be the best. And so this is a really essential aspect of their training. Um, we, you can see the aims there. I won't go through them all. But one of them is to promote better teaching techniques and better teachers in Papua. So part of our remit is to provide four weeks of, of education for the teachers every year. And we concentrate on teaching interactive teaching techniques um, and, and encouraging all our teachers to be compliant with the guidelines of the ACNC, which governs our, our work. Um, and because of this, as a result of that uh, requirement, we're bringing 22 well, actually 18 teachers, or possibly 20 teachers and two admin staff to Perth in June, and they will attend Milner College for an intensive uh, course there, which is designed for teachers of English whose first language is not English. So it's a wonderful opportunity for them. It's fairly expensive. Unfortunately, Milner can't afford to donate all of these teaching hours to us, so we do need to raise the money. To date, I believe we've raised nearly $14,000 so we're well on the way to meeting the costs for that course. And one of the most important things about the BPEC course is that through employing Papuan teachers, we show Papuan kids that they can do anything. Indigenous Papuans in Indonesia are pretty much like Aboriginal people in Australia. They are generally disadvantaged, they have less opportunities than the better educated, wealthier migrants from the other Indonesian provinces. So by employing Papuan teachers, we can show the kids that they can do anything anyone else can do. They can look up to their teachers and see what wonderful achievements they have made. So this is an important part of our work. And everywhere we went when we visited late last year, we were welcomed. Every single centre. We actually visited uh, all 15 English centres while we were there and every single one of them welcomed us. Um, I think that's where Welly hails from. I think that's Biak Utara. You can see there that group. Uh, every single place met us with a great welcome ceremony, often dancing, cultural exchange, gifts. Um, this centre was set up by Franz Imburi, who you might remember stayed with Bob Sumner in around about 2017, I believe. And there's Ross giving some instruction to some of the students in Lydia's class. You can see Lydia there in the stripy shirt. She was here also in 2017, and that class is in Muaratami. There we are up in Wamana, where the people are even closer to their cultural roots. And you can see Clara in the front. She was also an APSEP student. And then we went on to Malamoy. This centre was started by Mondo, who you might remember stayed with the Jeffreys for a while. And 
If you look really closely and you've got better eyes than me and read that sign in the background, it welcomes us, particularly the Black Pearl Network, to their centre and these big posters were set up everywhere we went to make us feel welcome and acknowledged. And you can see the Uniting Church logo up there in the corner as they recognise their partnership with our church. And as I said, not all the facilities are what we would see in our primary schools, but the kids come anyway and the teachers teach and it's just a, a remarkable uh, gift that they give to the children. And these children, some of them are really fluent. I have to admit that the most fluent child we met while we were there was a nine-year-old in Wasior, which is where Franz course is. And I was so impressed with what he had done with this child. I couldn't believe that a nine-year-old could be so fluent in a second language. So I asked him where he learned his English, expecting him to say in the BPEC class, but he actually said he learnt it by gaming online because all the other gamers speak English. <laughs> so we think we're doing a good job, but actually there are other ways. <laughs> and these are our BPEC classes. They're spread all over Papua now. We've just opened a class in Maroki. See right down at the bottom corner there? That's a new class that has just opened. Um, and there are classes all over the place. We visited all of them and it was a remarkable odyssey uh, across Papua. And I have to then also give a pat on the back to Ash because it was her organisation that got us there and booked the planes and sorted the missed flights and, you know, it very, very uh, great help we received from our office here. Uh, the vocational training program is the last big event I hope it's going to be the last big event. We were trying to make this whole program self-sustaining within 10 years. Well, we're halfway through the 10 years and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. However, the vocational training program is really exciting. Everywhere we've been in Papua, people have asked us to help them to train Papuan people so that they can reap the benefits of industry and commerce. And for many Papuan people, it's hard to break into those areas. However, the vocational training program aims to equip them to work in the tourism industry. There's very little available in Papua at the moment that appeals to Western tourists who, of course, like things very neat and tidy and clean. So um, a lot of Western tourists simply don't go there because the standards are not what they've come to expect. So this vocational training program will train Papuans to work in tourism and hospitality to develop facilities and infrastructure that will support that industry and uh, to be able to benefit their own families by working for reward. However, first we have to set up the course and train them. So we have employed uh, an amazing young man, Carol Stroyer, who is a, a Biak native, and he will be setting up a centre in Biak, which is an island off the north coast of Papua. It's already quite a tourist centre for Papua, so it's a good place to begin. However, when word got around, other people wanted us to set up a vocational training program in their town too. And Sorong, on the western tip of Papua, was very, very keen. So there is some competition between those two centres to see who gets their centre established first. And it will probably depend on the financial input of the locals, because everything we do is in partnership. We don't pay all of anything, because that generally goes against all the community development guidelines. Everything has to be driven by the local people. And so this program is particularly driven by them. So you can see we've employed Sroyer. He's already beginning to write lesson plans and course content. He's recruited local hotels and tourist um, suppliers to sponsor the course. Some of them will supply guest speakers and teachers. Some of them will provide opportunities for practical experience for students. Um, it's looking really exciting. There's a lot happening there and it's just going to get bigger. So um, it's, it's the most exciting thing happening at the moment, the most new thing happening, and I'm sure there'll be lots more to hear about the vocational training program. Everything uh, relies on partnerships. We're not doing anything on our own. And in compliance with the ACNC requirements, we're trying to get letters of agreement and memorandums of understanding written and signed as part of every partnership. So you can see there are lots of meetings and this was the signing of uh, one of those MOUs and they're really important because they outline very clearly the responsibilities of all the partners and most of our partnerships are three-way. So they'll be between the local regency or classes, the Black Pearl Papua Foundation, which is the Papua end of our organisation, and the Black Pearl Network Australia. So there's lots of governance. 
Yes, Fred is, in, where, is the man wearing the red top and he's our manager in Papua and a, a most remarkable man and I think he works about 24 hours a day. And that you might recognise Jeff Bice from Synod who has given us wonderful support and joins us on every trip to Papua. And whilst the Synod pays some of his expenses, it costs Jeff quite a great deal to join us. So we really appreciate his support. And that TIFA, that hand drum, was given to us as a gift after the signing of this MOU. Sadly, the biosecurity people at Perth Airport took the goanna skin off the top of it, but we've still got the drum. Um, and I just wanted to show you that not all of Papua is poor. When we flew in, we got off the plane and were shepherded into this room, which was the VIP reception suite. And there you can see the three wise monkeys um, looking very outstanding there. Um, unfortunately, Ross had lost his feather headdress, so he had to wear his woven bag instead. But it was a dual purpose item. And so you can see all gifts are appreciated and used. Uh, and I managed to refrain from showing the best picture of a gift, which was uh, Jeff Shupp's woven headdress, which was really outstanding. But you may see it in the newsletter, I'm not sure. <laughs> so there we go. And of course, keep this in mind. If you have a whole lot of money burning a hole in your pocket and you want to get rid of it, you're welcome to go onto uh, the GoFundMe page. This, this is extraordinary. We didn't really have such great hopes for it but I believe we're up to about $5,000 on that GoFundMe page already. So it has been a really worthwhile effort and we have Kerry Povey from Trinity North to thank for setting that up. So I thank you and uh, I'll leave you in peace now. <laughs> if you have any, have any questions, go ahead. for questions and, and I'd like to first of all, I know that uh, Deborah can't be with us, but I'd like to ask the, uh, the pro-treasurer, Mari Young, and Mari, can you tell us something about um, the tax deductibility of our donations, please? Um, we're very excited Mari, at the moment. There, do I have to be over there? Yes, we're very excited at the moment because we have been working for a long time. We ha have, we even had discussions with a, a tax lawyer. We have read and reread and reread the uh, tax department and the ACNC documentation, and we have finally agreed and approved. And Deborah has signed off on the fact that we are totally tax deductible for all donations for both programs for because we really wondered whether the Black Pearl Network with the money going overseas was totally tax deductible. Yes, it is. And so we're very, very pleased that any donation over $2 can receive a tax receipt now. And uh, so people can feel free to give um, freely to, to all the programs. Thank you. Are there, uh, are there any other questions? Can I ask a yes, question yes, of you, yes, Jeff? Mary, yes. We have a couple of new members on our board and I don't think that they're known to people here. Would you like to tell us who they are? The, the member for City Beach has uh, quite rightly pointed out that I did um, somehow or another omit to give a very, very brief bio to our new um, members of board. Um, Mark Fielding is uh, a uh, retired uh, high school teacher and currently working uh, in a, uh, um, an embryoic Baptist um, uh, university-based um, uh, organisation um, and he's tutoring um, master's students in the area of education and uh, Mark has willingly joined the board and is currently uh, working very hard 
um, on the vocational education program. Um, the other new member is uh, Donna Wilson. Donna was the service and volunteer director at St Stephen's School in uh, Karamara and Duncraig, and uh, she um, has an amazing network, particularly with uh, senior students, and she has been very importantly involved in the uh, development of what has now become the Creative Living Centre Youth Ambassadors Group, which will function um, with uh, youthful vigour, um, very switched on smart ideas about how to use social media and to be able to relate to senior students in Uniting Church and uh, other schools um, and universities uh, in the recruitment process for our uh, um, um, school holiday programs, uh, um, annual Perth camp. Um, and our relationships with teachers and students in Papua. So Donna's bringing um, that, that gift as well. And I did mention Gail Creswell, um, who has uh, come on board uh, as, the, um, as a board member from uh, Derby and a close relationship with Moenjum. And I mentioned Robert Hoskins, a Uniting Church uh, retired minister in Melbourne. And Robert has managed to gather around him a group of very interested supporters in Melbourne, um, including uh, some uh, folk from St Kilda, Port Melbourne and Melbourne Parish um, churches. And also uh, he does part-time lecturing at the Australian Catholic University and the health faculty of that university is involved in public health issues and they are on board as well. So we're really uh, pleased and excited to welcome Robert um, to the board as well. So they're the new board members that you probably won't see around here too often. Thank you. I think it goes without saying that none of this and our board and our volunteers wouldn't be able to do what they do without people like you. You're our backbone, our, our backstop. You're, you're the people who keep us going and support us in all sorts of ways. And um, we are so grateful for this congregation for Wembley Downs Uniting Church, for Trinity North Uniting Church, for Wesley Uniting Church in the city, um, many of the churches that support us and individuals who support us. So thank you all because this work, this mission would not happen without it. Oh, and the country churches. There's Mora, there's Gigi Gannop, there's many other country churches who, Dongra too, who have invited um, Leanne and Kerry at different times to go up and speak to their church and then they give donations towards this program. So it's a very widely supported and much loved program. It's a, it's a grassroots mission of the Uniting Church and we're very grateful. Thank you.